have 17 tips and settings to take your DJI Mini 2 experience to the next level. And what I mean by this is I'll be going through the key tips and settings that you guys need to know to really capitalize on the Mini 2. And I've broken this down into, like I said, 17 tips and settings, but within that they're broken down into settings for the flight screen, settings for your safety controls, also some settings for your controls, settings for your camera, and the transmission settings as well. So the whole video will have timestamps below and it will be broken up into each individual tip and setting so you can quickly jump to wherever you need to be. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments below guys. Um, but let's start out with tip one, which is the battery icon that you'll see in the top right corner when you're just on the usual flight screen. So when you can just see your camera feed, in the top right corner there'll be the battery icon. Tapping on that will let you know how long until the drone goes into return to home mode. It'll also let you know how long until a forced landing. And finally, how long until the battery is completely depleted. Really important information to know at a glance. Another really important thing to get your head around is the map option in the bottom left. So you have to tap to bring up the map into the tiny box, tap on it again and it'll bring up the map as the main focus with your camera feed then in the bottom left corner. And from here it will actually show you what the quickest path is to return back to the pilot. It also lets you know where you've flown so far and it lets you know which way the drone is facing. So it gives you a very clear representation of what's happening and this is important if you've lost the video feed for example, if you're trying to figure out where you are and you're really struggling to kind of get an understanding of the orientation of the drone, this is a really powerful way to kind of access the map and understand exactly what's going on at a glance. Now for the third tip, it's really important to get your head around the compass in the middle bottom of the screen when you're accessing just the flight screen, when you've got your video feed set up, you can see that this actually shows you where the drone is facing in relation to the controller. So you can tap on that compass and it will tell you where the drone is in relation to the controller. It will say behind or in front of, to the side, whatever it may be. And this gives you a rough idea of where the drone is in relation to you without accessing that map and taking up the whole screen. Moving on to setting four, and this is the zoom functionality that's available exclusively to the Mavic Air 2 and the Mini 2. So it's not available on the original Mavic Mini, and this is a little bit of a gimmick seeing as it is digital zoom, but it allows you to go two times when you're in 4K, uh, three times in 2.7K, and then four times in 1080p. Now this is a little bit of a gimmick as it is digital zoom and you lose a lot of the quality, but it's a really handy thing to use if you want to potentially envision what a shot would look like framed a little bit tighter. Um, it also gives you an idea of what's going on in an area without flying to that area. So you can save some time flying to different areas. The fifth setting is the pre-flight menu that you can access from the flight screen. All you gotta do is tap on altitude zone at the top and it will pull down the pre-flight menu. And this gives you some control over the auto return to home as well as the max altitude, max distance and the option to format your card on the fly as well. I like to really increase the return to home altitude, seeing as a lot of trees and buildings are higher than 20 to 30 meters. So set that at about 80 meters. And then also max altitude and max distance gives you some control if you want to limit yourself in a, in a small open field, for example. If you're learning to fly, if you're teaching someone else to fly, you can really limit the altitude and distance so that you can have a controlled flight in a small area. Now diving into the actual settings menu now, all you have to do is tap the three dots in the top right corner and this will bring you straight to the safety settings. So I've got a few safety settings and tips here. The first one is to do with the max altitude and distance, which is what we just covered before in the flight menu, but this is just a different area to access it. And it's something to really familiarize yourself with. Like I said, really good if you're flying with someone for the first time, if this is your first flight, just limit your max altitude and max distance. So you're limited to fly in a certain zone. Now the seventh tip is the auto return to home. Now, as you've seen, I've been tweaking the flight protection here, which is the max altitude and max distance. But as you're tweaking those, it actually adjusts the auto return to home altitude. So as you can see right now, it's limited to 35 meters. Meters. So you need to be really aware of this when you are going to use the return to home. I would personally recommend getting used to the manual landing and manual takeoff as you're flying in an open area. If this is your first time or you've got someone flying it, 
Just be really aware that the return to home will adjust as you adjust the max altitude. So that's something just to be aware of and something really important to get your head around. The eighth tip to familiarize yourself with is the find my drone setting. And this is available still through the safety control settings. And again, really important to familiarize yourself with this one. And this is important to look into before it even happens. You know, hopefully it doesn't happen and obviously stay safe as you're out there flying, but just familiarize yourself with what's available because when something happens, in the heat of the moment, your executive functioning shuts down, you are flustered, you don't know what to do, you know, at least you've looked into this and you have an idea of how to navigate this menu before anything even occurs. So then when you're in here, you can see which way the drone was facing and the rough location before you obviously crashed or it hit something or whatever happened. This will give you a really clear idea of where it was last. And then you can tap on start flashing and beeping when you get close to the drone. And that will hopefully bring your awareness to where it is. If it's lost in some shrub, some greenery, in a tree, whatever it may be, this will hopefully catch your attention enough so that you can see where the drone is. We're moving on to the control settings now. So when you tap on control, you'll see that you have a few options here for the front LED. So you can change the mode and the color. So if you tap into the mode, you've got a few options here. You've got breathing, rainbow, and solid. And within the solid option, you can then change the color of the front LED. Now this is a little bit of fun, it's a little bit of a gimmick, and it's something that does really kind of add a fun element to the Mini 2, but it also has a function as well, because if you're more likely to see a flashing light than you are a solid light, then this is gonna make a difference if you want to see which way your drone is facing firstly, but also if you're losing it in a particular area, if you've had to land somewhere and it's still flashing with those colors that stand out, it might be the difference between you seeing the drone and not seeing the drone. So again, just something that can be a bit of fun, but it also can have some sort of functionality behind it as well. So just be aware that you can change that. And if there's a color that stands out more to you, then I'd recommend choosing that one. The 10th tip is making sure that you allow now the upward gimbal rotation. Now this is still within the control settings and it's really valuable to enable that because it changes the upward rotation from a zero degree to a 20 degree upward rotation, meaning that you have an additional 20 degrees to point the camera up. And this can really change the look of a scene if you're potentially shooting low to the ground. You can actually angle the camera up by 20 degrees. So why wouldn't you enable that? You know, it's a really handy setting to enable. Moving on to number 11 now, it's still within the control settings and it's the advanced gimbal settings. Now what I really like about the Mini 2 is it allows you to tweak the normal mode, the cinematic mode, and also the sports mode as well. So you can change the pitch speed, the pitch smoothness, the yaw speed, and the yaw smoothness. So I really love tweaking these, and I would recommend just playing around with it and seeing what works for you. The pitch smoothness does make a big difference to the abrupt movements that you'll notice sometimes as you move the gimbal down, for example, to look down at the ground and you let go of that toggle, it will just abruptly stop. But if you change the pitch smoothness, then it will gradually come to a stop. It looks a lot more cinematic, a lot smoother, and you can play around with all of these settings in here. I love it that they've given us options for sport mode, cinematic mode, and normal mode. A really nice thing to play around with, and you can just reset it at the end of the day. So just play around with it until it feels right for you. Familiarizing yourself with these settings can actually take your videos to the next level. It can create a smoother look to your videos, and it's a really powerful setting to get your head around. The next tip is still located in that control tab and it's the phone charging option that I believe is only available for iOS users right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if Android users have this option, but basically you tap on that and it will be using the charge the battery life from the controller to charge your phone. This is really handy because as we know, it drains your battery life. So it's important to have a fully charged phone if you need it for anything else, especially if you're traveling. Really handy to enable that in the settings. Moving on to tip number 13, and this is the button customization. So you can recenter the gimbal and you can toggle the map. So you've only got two settings, but it's a really handy thing to enable. I've got it set so one tap enables the map view and double tapping will recenter the gimbal. Recentering the gimbal basically looks down at the ground to 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees and then double tapping it again will reset it to 
to the zero degrees. Really handy if you want to look down at the ground or up at something else in a quick manner. And then you can also access the map and toggle between the camera view and the map view. Again, a really handy feature to have, super quick and easy, and it can be really useful for a lot of people. Moving on to the camera settings now, and for tip number 14, I would recommend enabling the histogram. You can enable it, it will pull up the graph, and then you can move that around on your screen wherever you want it to sit. And this just gives you a visual understanding of what's happening in the scene. So as I adjust the EV here, you see as I go into the plus, it adds more light to the scene. And as I go to the minus, it adds more darkness to the scene. And in the middle is the mid-tone there. So you kind of want a nice balance. You don't want it to clip either side. And this is something that's just a visual representation as you're adjusting the manual settings. Something really important to get your head around and something that I use quite often. The other thing is enabling the overexposure warning. A lot of people don't like this because it's quite intrusive on the screen, but I like it as a visual representation. It shows me how overexposed the scene is or underexposed the scene is with those zebra patterns that come through. It is a really clear indication of, okay, that sky is way too blown out or the scene isn't exposed correctly. Really easy to look at and get your head around. And then the next thing is adding grid lines. This is setting number 16, still within the camera settings. Enabling those grid lines is something I love to add. It just gives you an idea of what the frame looks like. It gives you an idea of what's on the left, the middle and the right hand side of the frame gives you some nice boxes there to visually see what you're framed. And then having that center point as well is just a nice added benefit for me. And this is something I prefer. So let me know if you guys like that. And then for the final setting, number 17, channel mode. So you go to the transmission and you can actually manually adjust the channel mode. Now for the most part, leaving it on dual band is gonna be fantastic. But if for whatever reason, there's a lot of interference in an area, you can then go into the manual mode and you can see what's happening. It gives you a really clear understanding of how much interference is going on and you can then change between the different modes. This is really handy. Your drone has to be uh, landed, it has to be on the ground. You can't do this while you're flying, but I will do this occasionally if there's a lot of interference and it just gives me an understanding of how much kind of frequency and signals are going on in that area, especially if you're around a lot of houses, this is a really good indication. But anyway guys, that's the end of my 17 tips and settings for your DJI Mini 2. These tips and settings have helped me countless times and I just thought I'd share them with you guys to hopefully add some value to your flight experience. Let me know in the comments below guys, were there standout tips and settings that you use regularly? Did you learn something new from here? Or do you have other tips and settings that you would like to let other people know about? Let us know in the comments below and we can have a discussion there. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to have a splendid day and peace out. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the content, and leave us a comment about what you think we should review next. See you